Uh, just uh, three or four years ago, uh, the President of the United States decided he needed to find a plant, a uh, manufacturing plant that he could uh, go to and sort of praise because they were doing great productivity. And he found one in Davenport, Iowa, an Alcoa plant. Uh, I doubt if he ever knew why uh, or the role that we had in that, but it was a huge role. Uh, roughly s seven years prior to his going there, may have my time off a little, anyway, we began to cascade our version of the T group, which is an in-house version, uh, quite different than the classical T group, which would, did not work when it went in-house, and it would not work. Uh, but ours, uh, we began with the e-board, the uh, steel, steel workers uh, executive board and the president of the union in a joint T group, or I'm going to call it skill group, tough stuff, I mean, I'll mix those words, and with joint, with the plant manager and his direct reports. So how many people in the room? So I'd say here's, we're talking about roughly 20. And we're also not talking about just one week, but we're talking about a three day follow through in uh, uh, three weeks, and another three day follow through in six weeks. So, so how long was the initial experience? Five, five, five days. days. Now in these five days, we had, they were in two skill groups, but we did a lot of mixing up. In other words, we'd have half of the executive group and, and half of the, uh, direct reports in a group and the other half over here. But then, we, because we only want about 10 or 12, we don't want 22 in a group, so we're 20, so we split them up. But then we also had all kinds of things where they were interfacing with each other. Because the, in the classic T group world, it was about 40% of the laboratory education experience. What we call tough stuff is the laboratory education. And our skill group is roughly 40 or 35 percent of the time. So they had that and of course they dealt with real issues. I mean that's what people deal with when you deal in a house. If you send them off to a training somewhere where they're there with all strangers, of course they can't deal with their work environment because other people say, you know, I'm tired of hearing you talk about that. But here, man, it becomes here and now fast. People say, yeah, well, I'm about some issue between the union, the management, some issue on the floor, some issue in safety, whatever it is. So um, then we cascaded that experience across intact work groups to 1,300 people over the next six, seven, eight years. And uh, an intact work group would look like this when it got to the floor. You'd have a supervisor, you'd have the shop steward of that group. You would have an engineer, you would have the crew. Now, the engineer, if he was only interfaced with this group, which was rare, would be there all the time, but the engineer would have had other, another skill group experience or team group experience, but they would still dip in enough with this group. And the same with uh, a quality person or others that interfaced with this group. But, but it was a, an intact, or at least then, we said in-house kind of group. And we moved it through the whole organization. They had a half a day before the five-day thing where they talked about what's, what's our role in this organization? What's our part, piece of the pie? What are we expected to do? What do we expect of ourselves, et cetera? Then they had the five days, and then they also had the follow-through sessions. So think of that with 1,300 people. In the meantime, we did a major project uh, of uh, cost effectiveness, reducing costs and raising production, uh, raising money and making money, uh, the total 15 million. And we involved over 100 people, including more than 50% steel workers. Because that's, we say, if you're not going to do that, they'll come in the room, they won't trust the outcome. You've got to have them there. Now, as far as what we specifically do in our skill groups, it's different than the classic T group. And I know the classic T group. I had my first one in 1953. Um, here, we, we would, let's say we have 10 people. We would have five in an inner circle and five in an outer circle for most of the experience. Sometimes we'd have them all together, like in the classic T group. 
But most of the time, it's these five and these five, and they're assigned. One here is watching one here. Now, the people on the inside have this assignment. They're told, uh, I want you to be in the here and now. I want you to talk about what I speak from yourself, what I feel, I want, I think. We want you to notice the group processes that are happening here. Uh, how decisions are being made, etc. And we want you to stay connected. That's the task of the interior group. The outside group, you describe the behavior of people. One of the folks I'm now talking about, the most difficult human skill there is, to describe what somebody did without putting your judgments in. And of course, uh, we, we do all kinds of work with them. Uh, get one example. If somebody moves close to somebody, one person will say, um, they were in his face, or, and then, you know, that's their judgment. But for the person there, they might have liked it. They might have liked it. It's, so we have to teach behavior description to the outside circle. Now, behavior description is fundamental to everything. If one doesn't know how to describe behavior different from my judgments of that behavior, then I cannot learn emotional intelligence. I can't, I, I can't manage, I can't give clear feedback, I can't ask for clearly, specifically what I want. Behavior description is, is key to this. So the outside circle works on that, and it's a discipline. The inside circle works on what appears to be more fun stuff, but I mean, working at uh, more, uh, at, you know, what's going on for me, between us, what's going on in our group, how do we, why are we talking about this? Like, oh, we made a decision by default, things like that, the inside group. But that's been our unique take. And the thing that happens. And then you switch at some point? Oh, or? yeah, they switch. They go out and talk to their partner. They go back in. Then they switch. And, and the uh, outside group goes inside. All oh, stuff, absolutely. All the stuff we did years ago. Absolutely. And we switch even partners the next day mm -hmm. in that. There's, there's one other thing uh, escaped me there I wanted to uh, say about that. Uh, oh, <laughs> the people uh, do talk about their live issues in there again, and that's fine. See, one of the mistakes that uh, novice trainers made in the T-group movement was they'd say you can't have a topic. Well, that's, that's absurd. I mean, you can't talk to someone without there being a topic. You don't have to have it assigned. What we say is we're not going to give you a topic, but we don't say you can't. And they start to talk right away about stuff that's bothering at work. Pretty soon we're helping them to talk about how's that affecting them right here in the group, what's going on with you now. But, uh, but we do honor that mm -hmm. they often say, wow, I hadn't thought about that problem in production that way. It's, it's a range because if you think about any meeting at work, there's, they're talking about any agenda as a there and then. What happened in that department yesterday, that's an issue, okay. It also, though, eventually can have the here and now. Hey, wait a minute, why are we talking about this instead of that? That's a here and now. And um, one other thing, the, the first day of our training, people begin to get it that this is relevant to work. For instance, two people be talking a lot and the other people not talking. And I might say, well, you know, I noticed the two of you are doing most of the talking, the rest aren't talking. I just want to ask a question. Does that ever happen at work in meetings? Oh, yeah, all the time. Okay, solve it here, you'll solve it there. Our goal the first day is to help them realize, contrary to what a lot of people say, which is that this isn't real, is that what they're doing here is the same stuff at work they brought, dropped here. Now we can look at it, we can learn from it. And that's why Transfer over learning from a stranger group is very difficult, but with an intact group, it's, you're already there, almost, almost there at least. One other thing about that. See, I think that's true for any training. I think there's far too many trainings of whatever subject that are um, where they're having strangers come for a training, and uh, when you could be training an intact group. 